During a time when the church controlled what people could believe and the kings ruled over what people ought to own, John Locke, an English doctor, popularized three ideas that changed society and parenting forever. First, people keep fighting over their beliefs because nobody can actually know which one is true. To solve this problem, everyone should have freedom of thought and the right to choose their own religion. Second, kings can't just do as they please because people have natural rights to liberty, property and life and hence need to be asked for permission. Third, parents should avoid punishing their children since the use of emotions to make them behave well can make them sensationalist. Instead, they should allow their children to be guided by thoughts. Locke's ideas on religion and democracy became the foundation of most liberal societies. His thoughts on education, however, may have been even more influential. Locke understood that most people doubt new ideas without any other apparent reason than them being uncommon. However, teaching children how to think rationally and all for themselves works. Education is therefore the key to freeing society from political and psychological tyranny, and his book, Some Thoughts Concerning Education, became a parenting guide to that world. The book was originally written to help his friends raise their son, Edward, to become a virtuous adult, the ultimate goal of education. Locke defined virtue as a combination of self-denial and rationality, because we need to control our desires to think clearly. He proposes four main ideas to help Edward. First, newborn babies' minds are like a blank slate, also known as tabula rasa. All knowledge comes from our perception, which then leaves imprints on that blank slate. Because a child is highly sensitive to new experiences, even the smallest association of ideas can have lasting consequences. If you let a foolish maid convince Edward that goblins come out at night, darkness shall forever frighten the boy, Locke warns. Second, body and mind develop together, which is why Locke advises to nurture Edward's physical needs as much as his mental ones. He recommends a plain and simple diet, such as dry bread and a small non-alcoholic beer to make the boys strong. Rich or spiced foods should be avoided as they are too tempting for the boy's delicate mind. To toughen the young body, abundant sleep on a hard bed is ideal. Exposing Edward to harsh conditions such as cold baths protects him from the common cold. Third, learning should be pleasant. If children find academic education exciting and can choose what they like for themselves, they will then apply themselves to it industriously. To learn reading, Locke suggests games. This self-directed approach to learning allows the parents to discover and nurture their child's natural talents. Punishment should be avoided as it can break a child's spirit and it teaches the wrong values. To secure the best education, he urges the parents to hire a tutor rather than send Edward to school. Fourth, habits always trump rules, so parents should help their children establish clear routines and aim to become role models of rational thinking. This will help Edward to learn how to control his desires and think rationally to become virtuous. Locke believed that good habits of thought prevail, while rules which speak to the heart fail. However, habits are important not only because they trump rules, but because rules consequently lead to rewards and punishments, sensations that arouse feelings instead of reason. To become a free thinker, a rationalist, a child shouldn't be driven by rules or incentives, but by esteem and fear of disgracing oneself. 
Locke's thoughts on education were published in 1694 and became an international bestseller. Along with Rousseau's Emile, his book became one of the most influential texts on educational theory and perhaps history's most important guide to parenting. John Locke once said that, Reading furnishes the mind only with materials of knowledge. It is thinking that makes what we read ours. Since the same is true for videos, we recommend creating the habit of short thinking breaks after watching something. Afterwards, share your thoughts with others and in the same way, make new ideas forever yours. Try that right now and tell us what you think of Locke's ideas. This and all other Sprouts videos are licensed under Creative Commons. That means teachers from all around the world can use them in classrooms, online courses, or to start projects. And today, thousands already do. To learn how it works and download this video without ads or background music, check out our website or read the description below. If you want to support our mission and help change education, visit our Patreon, that's patreon.com slash sprouts.